Hi guys and welcome back to Greg's studio. I'm here today again with Daniel Franklin of Daniel Franklin Films. And uh, yeah, today we're going to talk about stabilization. So we've combined all our stabilizers of, they come in all different shapes and forms, to talk about your different stabilizing options. Okay guys, so before we jump into all the nice big expensive stuff, as you can see what Greg's doing, Greg is fitting a strap. So to talk about our first bit, we're going to talk about the neck strap and the three points of contact with our host, Greg Mitchell. Basically, I'm picking on the strap so I can put the camera over my neck. I've had to do this a couple of times on jobs because I've been at places where there's been performances and then people have asked me to film on the spot. But I'll have my camera, but I won't have my tripod or things like that because I didn't want anything heavy to look about with me that day. So what I'll do is I'll quickly put on the strap and then due to the three points of contact, the points being my hands and my neck with the strap, I can stabilize the camera by moving like so. And then I can pan. And that is your easiest way to stabilize your camera. Let's start oh, basic. Tripod. Tripod. Now what we have to hand is just a wee cheap tripod that I bought for, I don't know, between 10 and 25 quid. Does the job as a tripod, doesn't hold a lot of weight, but you can use it. So, for stabilized, set up your tripod and genuinely just pan, tilt, rotate, whatever you need to do. I actually once saw a photographer actually uh, shooting at an event and his tripod had legs that would come up one at a time. And what he did was he put one leg in his belt, one on his shoulder, had a strap on the camera and was using the legs to stabilize it as well. So he had say one, two, three, four, five points of contact with the camera, yeah. which was insane. A chest rig style system. So this is my weighted handheld stabilizer. Now I actually bought this for my first ever paid job. And um, myself and Daniel both spent ages trying to weight the stabilizer properly so the camera would balance. And if we're being honest, it didn't takes, go to plan. Uh, it didn't go to plan. It takes ages and ages to, to actually get there. And when you do finally get there, or as close as you, as you can get, it's it's not that great. So you we put your camera on top. You kind of pinch the front to stabilize it as well. And then do the kind of flat footed cameraman walk. One of the things I would suggest for this kind of one is be careful. Don't go too cheap. I think the cheapest you really want to go is about 55 quid anything cheaper than that the build quality is not really going to be there and the weight options and the instructions aren't really going to be there so you've got to be careful yeah. with instructions make yeah. sure you can understand them why do so i bought this for the first ever paid job that i was on and when i was editing the footage i didn't like it so i contacted them and i basically said okay hey, um here's a rough view of how it looks so let me know what you think and you know I, I mentioned that I wasn't happy with the stabilization as even with the software that I used to stabilize it it's not going to look that great because well obviously it's quite a cheap bit of kit so what I had to do what I didn't have to but I wanted to is I went and I bought this and then I did the job again a second time I reshot the whole thing with this one let's talk about gimbals let's talk about your one this is on the cheaper end of the market this is the Zhiyun Crane 1 version 2. I need to really mention something important about this stabilizer, which is... So basically, when you're stabilizing, you want to get it as balanced as possible. Otherwise, you'll just run your batteries down, because the batteries are what actually stabilizes it. So if you get it stabilized as you can, that's great. And the best way to do that is... And you have to buy this separately, is buy a little tripod to screw into the bottom of it, which is a pain that it doesn't come standard. You think that it would, but it's so much easier to set up and get balanced and save batteries just by having this little Manfrotto tripod, which is what, 10, 15 pounds max? Panning would be a lot more challenging if you didn't have the, the little tripod as well. But with the tripod, it's amazing. So you can pan up, pan down, left, right, and so on. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Now, if you were balancing just on this little bit here, it would just be really uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. It has a few different modes, so it'll have FPV and then lock mode, which I um, can't remember how to get into. But you can do loads of cool moves with gimbals, and maybe we'll do a 
there's a there's a little mod button here. Yeah. And you push that, and you just alternate through through the modes. And then this is your little joystick here. We're going left and right, and so on, and up and down for your panning shots. Yeah. I mean, they're definitely not light. Definitely not. No. no. But what is really cool about this specific gimbal here, which I love, is the fact that. It's small. This is a really small gimbal. Now it comes in this beautiful box here, which has all the foam in it to protect it and stuff. But this thing is so durable that I know I can just throw it into the laptop sleeve part of my camera bag and just go on about my day and just leave it rattling about in there and it'll be fine. So it's really handy to have something you can just chuck in your camera bag. So at any point I'll have my drone in my camera bag in, in one of the pouches, my gimbal, camera, a couple of lenses and stuff, batteries and so on and uh, yeah it's just, it's just so cool to be able to th throw that in your bag with everything else, it's, it's yeah. awesome. No actually, we'll talk about something that we've missed. This, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is another non-mechanical and these are quite common in the film industry. I used the one, yeah. These. Shoulder rig. Shoulder rigs. Now, the worst mistake you can make with a shoulder rig is not having a bit of weight at the back because it puts way much more weight on your hand. So I've got two little disc weights at the back, which I bought separately. Oh my god, that's genius. I never thought of that before, yeah. Remember that film we were making for. I can't remember the guy's name. In the, we were making that film in the brewery. Oh yeah. In Montreal. What's the name of the brewery again? Arbiki. Yeah, our Beaky Booty, yeah. So they make gin and vodka and stuff and everything, and uh, it was fun. I had they... this rig back at the time, I think, or I had part of this rig. No, I didn't have this. Wait, well, no, I borrowed, well, I say borrowed, it was his film that I was filming it for him. So I was using Reese's shoulder cam rig, and oh my god, I was not having a fun day at all because the weight at the front, I was working there for hours all day, I was holding this thing up. It's just, yeah. such, it's just such, an, it's such an uncomfortable. Ugh, come on, where's that? It's such an uncomfortable position to be in all day, just yeah, standing like there this. like this all day, all and day. And especially with all the weight, it's so sensible. All the weight down on you, yeah. Right then, so this is your basic shoulder rig, and if you hold it, I'll let you hold it to get a feel for it, it feels really back heavy, like if you hold it in the center. That, that's... <coughs> it does, yeah, but I mean... Once you put a camera on it, which will weigh like that... Yeah. It that's... feels way more comfortable. Definitely, yeah, I mean, it's more comfortable having weight to balance out, I mean... Your arms, well, my arms, when, I was, when we were making that Arbiki Booty video, oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, what about up next? Well, next. I can see it already, I'm quite excited about this. The next thing we're going to bring out is this big boy. I got mine second hand. Um, and I got it quite cheap. I got it for about half the original price, mm. but it was not well taken care of. So this guys, if I don't trip on everything, this is what's called a big three-axis gimbal. Now, there's loads of different types, so this one is by DJI, so you might be able to see by the fact that they put their branding pissing everywhere. Yeah. yeah, this is the Ronin range. Uh, this one just unfortunately wasn't taken care of as well as it should, so it's got a wee little finagles that you have to learn to deal with. But it's great. They're big, they're hefty, but they don't feel they feel a little bit weighty, but it's not overpowering, so I'll let you have a wee go. So holding it with two handles. It does feel more comfortable. It definitely feels more comfortable than my one-handed gimbal. I think I would probably, most definitely, be able to get more steady footage by... And it's also bigger motors. Like, look at that. Yeah. In that is just a motor. Mm -hmm. And then up here's a motor. Now, this is the Ronin M. Oh, Mine is fourth or fifth hand. So myself and Daniel, we realised that as his... DJ Ronin M is actually second hand. So you can actually pick one up for about the same price as my Zion version 2. So we decided we needed to work out which one would be the best purchase. And I have to say, personally, I was insanely excited to actually get a shot of his Ronin. Way more excited than I was using my own crane for the first time. So we thought the only thing we could do is compare it side by side and see which one actually provides the most steady footage. So we'll start with the Zion version 2. Okay, as you can see, it's really steady. So next, the DJI Ronin M.
Now, the interesting thing we need to remember here is the DJ Ronin M is actually second hand, so the motors aren't as good as they should be. What's using the Ronin? It kept drifting off to the left, which was a total pain in the butt. And uh, yeah, it was a little bit shaky as well. Now, the Ronin M, it's amazing. It's so cool. I was really excited getting a shot of it. I was way, way, way more excited using the Ronin M than I ever have been using my Zion version 2. But here's the thing though, to have this huge rig, it's just overkill for a little DSLR. Now we were shooting using a Panasonic G7. Now the Panasonic G7 is a tiny little mirrorless camera and we had this huge rig for this tiny camera. It looks a bit ridiculous. I mean, it's amazing. I want one, I really want one, but you know, how often would I use it? I would use the Zion version 2 way more often. It fits in my camera bag. I pop my DSLR on top of it. It doesn't look ridiculous. The fact that it's second hand as well means it was an unfair comparison because the motors aren't that great. But that's a problem as well is, um, well, where do you send it off to get fixed? I asked Daniel where he would send it to get fixed and he's not sure where in Britain he would send it off to get fixed. So as it is right now, even with just a small DSLR, it's not particularly steady and it keeps drifting off to the left, which is a bit of a pain in the butt, really. So yeah, although if I was offered a brand new one over the Zion Cream V2, obviously I would take the brand new one. But I know I would use it less than I would the Zion version 2 because it's just way more practical. So if I had to buy one, I'd stick with my own one. Yeah. Sorry, Daniel. Okay, guys, uh, thanks for watching and Thanks Daniel for bringing in lots of your gear and stuff and touching my hand there. <laughs> Let's start again because that was weird. Right. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much everything. So thanks for watching and thanks Daniel for bringing in loads of your gear for us to talk about as well. Uh, yeah, feel free to check out Daniel's channel. I'll leave a link in the description and yeah, hope oh, the end of video. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section down below. Any Damn it. If, if you have any questions or requests, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you want to see another video with Daniel going more in depth on tech stuff, please comment Daniel Nerd in the comment section down below. What he said. Bye. <laughs> Peace. Let's go. Yeah. And you just walk out of it? And that's it, done.